What is up everybody? Logan here again today with another video coming right at you. I just got done running. I just ran in the rain. It's a terrible idea. I have no idea why I did not check the radar before I went to run. But today we're going to dive into how I made $2,015 today trading the stock market. Zero DTEs on SPX, pretty similar to what we were talking about. And you can see a couple other members in the Discord that did well. If you guys want to come trade with me, the link is in the description. I tr throw out a lot of my trades that I take. And we just kind of go from there, uh, do a lot of management stuff, hang out throughout the day. So it was a good day overall. I'll go through all the strikes. You guys can see I called it out in the main options chat way back. Um, I called out one of my, right here, my PCS. And then in the zero DT, I explained when I was scaling into these trades. So that is the discord. Now let's hop right into TOS. So now that we're in TOS, we're going to look at how I scaled into these. You guys can see I took 15 contracts here, another five more at that 756, 745 time, which was right around this first candle because I'm on mountain time. So we took it right towards the top end of the candle. We have two things. We have a gap to fill below, 95% of gaps get filled. And then we also have this resistance range. Just 4160, 4170 has been the resistance range for about the last week, I would say, where the market has not loved where it was. So We'll go back to the monitor tab, check out the account statements here. And you guys can see I filled for 20 right here, contracts on the call credit. Then I scaled in four more on the call side. And this where it gets a little bit more nerve wracking is I actually put a put spread in at 846, which if we go to that candle, um, it's actually on this candle. So as we were about halfway down, I think it was that when we hit 4140, um, or actually, no, sorry, it was a little bit higher, probably 4150 before the VIX had shot up, I actually placed some put credits at 41.15. I meant to place those for tomorrow because my plan was to swing trade those, but I accidentally placed them for today. So that was a little bit, that was a little bit more for like a bounce here. You know, maybe we fill this gap, bounce back up towards the end of the day type thing. You got to remember the expected move as well um, from Friday's close was where we closed at 4108. The expected move was about 40 points. So we already opened above it. So that's why I was also confident starting the day in call credits. So then I moved to put credits and was a little early on my entry here um, for these four and these seven, which I grabbed a little bit more for 30 credit at 904. And then the market continued down. So I grabbed 10 more at 40, 80, 40, 75. This was the trade I called out to the Discord. And the reason I called that one called that one out to the Discord is because essentially it was the same probability of profit based on when I timed these. And I'm just slowly scaling into my positions, right? I was definitely early here. The only reason was is because we broke the support. Because I remember we bounced here and we bounced at, at 4145. I had collected a lot of that credit. But then on this next leg down, um, that's where I started to get tested. I didn't roll it, didn't manage it or anything because we had time left. Then we had this really nice move at 41.40, right? The RSI is still chopping. And then we immediately sold off at that start of this candle and filled that candle all the way down, all the way back down to 41.22 ish. So this was around 14, like around two o'clock Eastern time. So noon, my time. And going back to the monitor tab, as you guys can see, I also filled more of them at 11.43 for 75 credit. So right around then, that would have been on this candle. I got it right around when we were 41 or 41.31. Then it shot up. It was looking good, sold back down. So we had a really close call at the end of the day here, which I think goes into my management terms too, where everybody was asking off the last video, what do you do, right? Like, Logan, what do you do? The market's, you know, testing your strikes. So there's a couple things I want to go over first. Number one, I don't scale them with more than 10% of my account. I'm going up to 14 grand, 15 grand when I'm placing these. I'm for the, for the time being, I'm not going to scale any higher than that, just for my own sake of being emotional. So we're looking at my other strikes. 4,100 was fine. 40, 80s are fine. That's a lot of that collateral, over half of it. I only had 5,500 bucks in collateral on the other strikes. And then granted, as I was watching it through the day, and this is why scaling in and out of positions is so important. Granted, I haven't scaled out of any of these because the ones that I was going to scale out of, right, these calls were basically worthless all day. There's no reason to take them off when they're five times outside the expected move, because even if it did start to trot up, the VIX would get crushed. So your call spreads are still going to lose value. 
um, when they're that far out of the money. If they're not, of course, getting ran over or close to, they're going to eventually expire worthless. Maybe once every once in a hundred trades, it somehow gets blown out or hits a stop. But if we're talking just about the put credit spreads that I took at 4115, because all day we were pretty much chopping, like I was in the money here and it bounced back and I was in the money. And mainly just knowing we had that gap fill. And once we filled that gap, we'd bounce. Granted, let's say it continued to fall. I would simply roll that position into tomorrow. Now the SPX has multiple days, knowing I didn't use all my collateral on that one strike because I scale in and out of positions, right? That's always been how I trade this market. You have to scale in because you can get better fills by waiting on some of your contracts. And if you're not emotional with your money when it comes to trading, it's a lot easier to scale in because you don't really care about the outcome. You care more about the process because it's like, all right, let's say you filled for $40 credit on 10 contracts and it immediately goes up to 50 in like 10 minutes. Then you can scale in the rest of your contracts instead of getting upset that you filled all 20 at 40 and, you know, oh, I missed out on a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. You just have to move on from that when you're emotionless as a trader. Now, granted, I was getting a little nervous at the end of the day because on this candle, I had already counted like all my money for the day because I had collected probably 80% in total. I think it was up that 1600 out of two grand for the day. Then this sell-off happened. Then it was two out, like an hour and a half of just chopping around my strike. But you also have to remember, we are really married to these moving averages on this time frame. I've mentioned it as much as I can. We don't like to stay too far away from them. You know, even though we were below them, yeah, we could have tested 4,100, but there was also a lot of money at 4,100. Mark does not like to pay those out. The market makers, the institutions, they don't want to see those get paid. So that was my whole philosophy. So my whole thing on managing is like, I'm going to roll it into the next day, right? Because there's that expected move math. When you're exceeding it to the upside, hit call spreads. And, and that's in this market specifically with the medium VIX, right? Yeah, the RSI was a little red, but it was more or less at the end of the day, a gamble on those because I knew I could roll them if I needed to pay a small debit to do so. So since we had not done a clear break of this and we were just simply filling the gap and getting in this area to do so, that's why I wasn't really too worried about it. Um, even if I let it go, I had collected a pretty good amount on those. Um, and then looking at the long leg off this bounce at the end of the day, there really wasn't anything for me to do. And since I'm unemotional with my money, and that was honestly less than, that was like about 4% of my port, maybe three, 3%, three and a half, depending on how I continue to scale this account. You have to be really careful here because like I knew what I'm willing to lose, what I can gain, how much I can gain on the port. But I also knew like I'm simply just going to roll this because I feel pretty confident in the market in general, especially with tomorrow's expected move and just looking at how you can get out of these. Because that's one thing I think that was very difficult with rolling in the past is when you roll to Wednesday or Friday, it gives the market an extra day to go down further and then an extra day to go down further before you feel max pain and you just miss it where you always feel like you're getting beat by the expiration date, right? We're like, oh, I was out of the money until the day of. So I would have just rolled it. I have enough capital to continue to manage my trades if I need to. And then also we're just chopping um, we didn't break any key resistance. We're still stuck below a couple of these moving averages. So I'm curious to see what we get tomorrow, but that is everything for me trading. That is how I made $2,015. Look at the expected move. If we were outside of where we closed yesterday, based on what it said in today, we have only closed outside of it four times, five times this year is what Halcyon has told me. He's done deep dives. He's doing one on NDX right now. So that is what I'm looking for when it comes to the market. When it comes to looking at when to take trades, I got a lot better fills by waiting until 41.20 to place the 4084s, or sorry, 4080s, 4075s, which was this moving average. So if we did test this one and break it, we'd still have support here. And that was the trade I called out to the Discord because we take really systematic plays. The other one, I jumped the gun a little bit. Just in case we continued to drift up, I wanted to have a little bit of put money, started to scale in, but yet again, it was not good enough for a call out by my standards. I still did take the trade and I, that's something I have to reevaluate with my mindset too is, you know, why did I take that trade exactly when we weren't even down to the moving averages? We we're at 41.40, right? We had a couple dollars to go. 
and I still put that trade on, had a nice bounce, but then sold again. So that's something I have to go back in the work lab and work on. I think that's something all traders should do is find something that they traded that day, go back to management. But another thing you can do too, which I'm not opposed to, and there's definitely times where I will do this, which is you have to just close when you hit your stop loss, but it's when your thesis is broken and I've yet to have that happen. Um, trading in this market with how I've been trading with the expected move. So yeah, would I close those 4080s if 4100 cleanly broke and then didn't bounce? Absolutely. But it did bounce. We want to stay close to these moving averages, right? You always do. The, the market will always trade near averages 99.5% of the time. So as long as you just don't get unlucky, and that's why sizing in is so important and scaling in because it really comes down to where your trades are, how you place them, when you place them, and what your goals are with the trades. So today was a fantastic day. I plan on doing it tomorrow, but that's going to be everything for me in this video. I hope this helped your mindset. Ask more questions below if you have them. I can get more in depth with everything. Um, like I said, if you need these moving averages, we have the 10-day the 21 day, the 34 day, the 390 and the 195 day. And this is on the 10 day, 30 minute chart on SPX. You guys can see that entire list right there. So that's going to be everything for me in this video and I will see you guys in the next one.